Someone was asked, he said that, have you got any relatives here? He goes, yeah, yeah, I have here, one second. Mm -hmm. He pulled out a 10 pound note, he goes, you see this woman on this piece of paper? She's my relative, she's my family, I've got no family here. She goes, old man, you shut your mouth, yeah? You shut your mouth. I do what I want to do. A beautiful young girl from the, my ummah, with respect, has gone out and made shame of herself. He opened his rosa qassam by Allah with a pork sausage. Dear respected brothers, it is undoubtedly the greatest of all the favors Allah wa ta'ala has done upon each and every one of us sitting here is the ni'mat and the blessing of Iman which Allah wa ta'ala has put inside our hearts. That undoubtedly we all agree with. There is another type of ni'mah which Allah wa ta'ala has afforded some of us who are sitting and some of us who are sitting are also part of that ni'mah. It's something which you and I, unfortunately, when we look at the statistics of the Muslims, we see that this is that ni'mah, that blessing, which unfortunately has not understood its true value and its true potential. What I'm trying to allude towards is none other than the youth we have, our youngsters. This is also a great, great ni'mah from Allah wa ta'ala and our great asset. Who will be there to carry on this deen further after the demise of our respected elders? Who will be there to take that flag of Islam and wave it in all directions? Who will be there to revive the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It's none other than the youth. It's none other than those people, who, those youngsters, that new generation. These will be the flag bearers of Islam. These will be... Th our one, these will be our guiding stars in the future. These will be those people who will be the representatives of this Ummah. But sadly, where unfortunately we've stuck in our materialistic ways, we haven't given our youngsters their due haq, we haven't given them their due right, We've not given them the correct ta'aleem or the correct tarbiyah. And as we see now, sadly, the, st the sad statistics are, many Muslims are those people, are the people that are openly and violating the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without no regard. There's no regard at all. They, some people just really could not care less that the command of Allah is being broken. And sometimes we've got our priorities wrong, our priorities mixed up. I was once in one particular masjid, without highlighting the geographical area. I'm just mentioning this as a case of Ibrah, and they refer a lesson for you and I to take. That, it's not that we are doing it, are we? What happened? There were a group of youngsters, and with great difficulty, mashallah, the, young, the brothers, they made fitr every Sunday, they would go for gush, they would bring brothers into the masjid, they managed to slowly, slowly, slowly bring in youth to the masjid. So the mashallah, the masjid was very big, alhamdulillah, it had a massive car park. Adequately, you could park approximately 50 cars. Now what happened was, is the youngsters thought to themselves, well, hey, I'll tell you what we'll do. We play football in the evening between after Asr, around about 7 o'clock. This was their daily routine. But what incorporated into their football now, we'll go to the masjid, we will pray Salatul Asr, and after that, then we will play football until Maghrib. This is what one of the youngsters said, and it is so such so because there are a group of people. If the the ringleader, you grab him. Like if you want to, there's loads of chicks everywhere. You want, you waste, don't worry, you're wasting your time picking up the small chicks. Pick up the mother. They will all come running. Take the mother, then they will slowly, slowly start following. You just some young groups are such. You just pick one or two of the youngsters from there, and the rest all follow. So then one youngster said, "Hey, we'll do this." We'll link up for Asr, we'll pray Salah, and we'll play f some football in, in the, within the masjid. Not in the masjid, but within the compound of the masjid. I'm just mentioning, I, I'm taking a branch off, or I'm standing, uh, I'm taking a, a, expl explaining this point, that we've sometimes got our priorities wrong. What happened now? Alhamdulillah, from five youth, it went to 10 to 16, subhanAllah, 21, 22 youngsters were coming. And what better for them to come into the masjid and put their head in front of Allah, afterwards to play together, 
And then consciously that time is up, we have to now put our football to the side because now the nida is coming, hayya ala salah, hayya ala falah, all we must put to the side because the hukum of Allah come first. That jazbah came alive, that, that desire came alive. Of course, youngsters are youngsters. Things can happen, things can go wrong. There were some plants which were planted and a ball just by chance happened to hit one of the plants. What happened to the plant? Of course, it's a football, so you, you can, the natija and the result, you, know, you can understand yourselves. What happened to the plant? It completely broke. Only a small plant as such. And this was prior, a couple of weeks before this event, some of the local brothers, Allah reward them, they thought to themselves, we spend money on our homes, we don't mind spending money on our homes, so let's spend a little bit of money for the house of Allah. So some brothers got together, a, a group, a, a good, a, a couple of dozen of brothers, and they all chipped in money, no money from the masjid, and they started decorating the outside of the masjid, where there was wood area, where there was grass, they would plant a few flowers, and then alhamdulillah, they made it very, very attractive. But these youngsters just carried on their football. What happened now? One respected elder in the community, respected elder, he didn't mean no harm, well he didn't think he was doing no harm, but the youngsters were playing once, one of them kicked a football and unfortunately it broke one of the plants or it ruined one of the plants. Now what happens? As they're playing, he was saying give me the football for a second. He takes it and he hurls it over the, over the, over the boundary of the masjid, throws it. And he actually shouts at them and rebukes them. That why are you, why are you coming here and playing this? Why are you coming into the masjid and doing this? They went and nevertheless got their ball and then afterwards what happened the guy came out again the youngsters were all gathered together and now there's a situation because now they're offended by what they've seen so the old the the, the respected the gentleman the gentleman started shouting at them again so now I was thinking to myself how can I somehow divert the attention from them onto me you can shout at me you can curse me you can swear at me our heart, heart are so hard, it doesn't affect me. But these youngsters, Bichari, they come with this, they were outside playing. Everyone is opening their arms ready to accept them and what is happening in the meh? Now what happened was is that he started shouting and these people, you know, you ain't go some jaw, ye kya kya kar rahe hain pe? Ye koi jungle khana nahi hai, ye koi circus nahi hai. This is not a circus, this is not a jungle, this is not a place to jump and run around. So what happened was, is that now the old man started having a go at them. So I tried to divert his attention. I took the football and bounced it a couple of times on the floor. I knew now I'm striking coal here. I'm rubbing coal together. Sparks are coming. He turns his attention towards me. You, tum apne aap ko dindar samajhte? And he started jumping on me now. Alhamdulillah, it didn't, I, it didn't bother me in the slightest. Wallah, it did not bother me in the slightest because we are nobody, we are nothing. I just wanted to think, to, I thought to myself, let me divert it towards myself. You can shout at me a hundred times, he's my respected elder, I will still touch his feet with respect. If he asked me, son, wash my feet, I will wash his feet. But now these, they've just come into the masjid, Allahu Akbar. And he said that, Yar, these plants cost a lot of money. Three pound, this was five pound, this was six pound. And I said and I thought, Allahu Akbar, look at the condition of the Ummah, subhanallah. The value for worldly things we've understood. A plan for three pounds, B&Q. Go end of season, you'll get them for free. 50p, 20p. This was the greatest sarmaya, the greatest capital we had. They're coming into the masjid. Who cares if a little plan got broken? Who cares if, a tr if something was slightly damaged? Replace it, I'll replace it. It's only three pounds, it's only a couple of pounds. Wallah, after this event, again now what happened? The ringleader gets upset. And he said, Look, you know, we don't even need this. We don't even need this, we might as well go into the field. And remember this very clearly. Outside are welcoming them, they're welcoming, come, come. And what's happening? We're driving them away, Allahu Akbar. We've got our priorities mixed up. What I'm trying to, again, you can understand, I don't mean no malice towards that brother. I'm sure he was sincere. I'm sure he was. He genuinely meant good. But the problem is we've got our priorities wrong. We've got our priorities wrong. We've, have we not understood the value? Okay, three pound plan. Let's just say it was a thousand pound plan. How valuable is that youngster? How valuable is that young boy? 
What benefit will he bring to the ummah if he is on Salat al Mustaqim? What benefit will he will bring others as well? And if you look at the time of the Sahaba, the things which the youth achieved, the youth achieved. We look past them, hey, Nikki, I don't know. Hey, youngsters, what do they know? Don't ever look at anyone scornfully and low. Allah Taala has kept sifat in each and every person. We don't know who Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will accept. But many amongst the Sahaba, we find great, great incidents, great incidents. Just to refresh our memories, if you, anyone remembers the incident behind, the, specifically Abdul Rahman bin Auf radiAllahu Taala Anhu. Now there is an expedition and they're confronting the enemy at that time. And when he stands, he sees that to his left and his right, there are two youngsters. Young, young age, young age. Only very young in age. Mu'adh bin Amr bin Jamuh and Mu'awid bin Afrah. These, Afra, these two youngsters. Now obviously, if you're, if, you're, if you're in the most dire conditions and the dire situations, you're going to say, Yaar, I wish I had some good, strong, say, Palwan next to me, I'll feel a bit more safe. Yaar, choose a karzan. What are they going to do? But then what happened was is that he, the one of the youngsters said to him, he said, Uncle, do you know this person, Abu Jahal? Because I've come to know he's cursed my Prophet. I've come to know he's cursed my Prophet. So I've made this azam and this intention. It's either me that goes or he goes. I've made this azam today. And then he was, run, he was dumbstruck that, Subhana, look at the words of this youngster. By this incident, what are we trying to explain? The jazbah of the youth. Don't look at them thinking, yeah, they're young, what can they achieve? Subhanallah, Allah has kept great qualities in each Muslim. And then the next youngster, he says exactly the same. Well, who is this Abu Jahal? I heard, I heard this person, He always talks garbage against my Prophet wasallam. They could not tolerate. And he was actually surprised that this was the jazbah, this was the desire in these youngsters. Abu Jahal met his end at the hand of these two youngsters. You know? What are we trying to deduce? Don't look at them in a young way, in a minor way. These were subhanAllah, if they had qualities. But looking at it from another angle, looking at it from another angle. Sufyan ibn Uyayna, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, a great scholar of the past, a great scholar. He, subhanAllah, he mentions, I was only four years old. How old? Four years old, Allah's fazl, I memorized the whole Quran. Four years old, Allah Akbar. We don't even start Alif Ba. He's memorizing Quran at the age of four. And then he mentions, by the time I reached the age of seven, I was already well versed in writing the hadith of Rasulullah. Well versed. The age of seven. Now remember one thing, the Prophet ﷺ mentions, مُرُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَهُمْ أَبْنَاءُ سَبَعِ the, the translation of the hadith, enjoin your family or your youngsters to read salah when they are the age of seven. So really nothing should, in that, if, 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 if salah has not been made fard before that, then nothing to that extent should be made incumbent that you have to do this. But that jazbah, that desire, I want to know what my Allah is saying. At the age of four, becoming a half of the Qur'an. Allahu Akbar. At the age of seven, writing numerous, numerous ahadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Recently we went to Croydon Masjid. MashaAllah, there was a, a conference there. A young boy, a young Somali boy, eight years old, become hafiz of Qur'an. It's achievable. My ustad, my respected Shaykh al-Hadith, who we studied hadith under, Hazrat Mufti Umar Farooq Loharwi, Damud Barakatuhum al Aliya, a great scholar of our times, Alhamdulillah. His son, only seven years old, full half of the Quran. This, what I'm trying to say, look at the qualities Allah Taala has put in our youth. But what happens? Unfortunately, we have not understood their value. And then there is a gap which has been bridged and made between them and the masjid. There is a gap which is made between them and the masjid. If you ask generally, Alhamdulillah, we find in some masjids, a lot of fikr is being made. <laughs> by, by way of the program, by way of the jamaats going regularly, Alhamdulillah, Imam Sahib is at the disposal of, of the youngsters. Alhamdulillah, some masjids are doing something. But unfortunate sad statistic is, a lot of masajid are idle when it comes to this. Idle. We've built a masjid, We've made it look attractive. 
what are the what are the musalliyeen of that masjid? Who are the people that are coming to pray? Are they youngsters? Who are they? What is going to happen in 20-30 years time? Who is going to inhabit the masjid? Who is going to take the masajid forward? Who is going to take the affairs of deen forward? We haven't understood how valuable these youngsters are. So we've made effort on all things, but we haven't made that due effort and that haqq on the youth, which is our most valuable of assets. The greatest ni'mah is iman, but these are valuable assets. Now many youngsters think that sometimes if I, I can't go to the masjid because the masjid is not, I don't, I don't benefit. They're looking at it from a benefit point of view. They feel that they're untouched, or out of touch rather, they're out of touch. That, I, I, the masjid can't solve my problems. Subhanallah, there are mashallah respective a'imma in the masajid. There are brothers with sincere hearts, they can assist everybody. But unfortunately this mizaj has been created. And it has made the youth distant from the masajid. And do you know what goes to cause the problem even further? It doesn't help our culture or our people. And our people, what do they do? They demonize ulama as well. They demonize them. Become whatever you want. Don't ever think of becoming a Molvi. Don't ever think. We have three or four sons, three mashallah, very strong, fit, mashallah, very intelligent. One will become a doctor, one will become an engineer, and a third will become a lawyer. Chotha Lula Langara Pejo Madrasa. Send him to the Malvis Bichara. He ain't gonna get anything anyway. Have we met have we what have we turned the deen into? So what have we made? We've made this now this gap between us and the youngsters, and this has also contributed to the factor as well. We've in our homes the is there real azmat for deen? Do the youngsters get that vibe from us that subhanallah their deen is something really important? Who are we learning our deen from? And I will add this in as well. This is the shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such small remuneration. And people are happy to sacrifice their time, their health, their wealth for the sake of the upliftment of the people within their localities. This is alhamdulillah, shukr alhamdulillah that some people are making that sacrifice. But what are we doing? We've now demonized them as well. We've now demonized some people who are attached to knowledge. So the youngsters, they're now making an even bigger gap. They're not in touch. They don't think that the ulama can solve their problems. So they don't come to the masjid. And to make it worse, we put in the child's mind, do anything you want. Just don't go down this route. Don't go down this route. One youngster came to me, and I will add this as well, alhamdulillah, I was a teacher teaching GCSE mathematics as well. I don't mean to praise myself, but it's just when I mention this incident, you'll understand why I've mentioned it. One youngster came to me and he said, I'm really stuck on quadratic equations. So I said, come bismillah, I'm, I'm a master at it, let me go. And I used to sit there and do them for fun. So he sat down and I taught him how to do it and he was really appreciative, the fact that you taught me how to do something, which I was stuck and I was afraid that I was going to go into an exam and get a sifr and a zero. He went home and I said to him, yeah, you can come in three, four days time. When three, four days came, he never came. So I bumped into him, I said, you should have come, I was here to help you. He said, when I went home, my father asked me, where have you been? I said, I was around, I'm Abdul Majid, but he referred to me as Maulana's house. I went around Maulana's house. So he said, what was you doing there? And he said, he was teaching me mathematics. He goes, you're a liar. Oh, Molvi, okay, who's sick here in mathematics? He just hit the massage. Where did he learn mathematics from? He goes, you're lying. You're lying. Where did he learn maths? You must have been talking about Islam. He's brainwashing you, isn't he? Allahu Akbar. And then he forbade him. You are not to go around his house. You know, subhanallah, we become demons or something. Demons. Are we like, for example, now, you know, like, stuck for the worst thing, Toba Toba. You know, the mums in the house, they say, Khabardar, Buddha, me, Molviz, I'm no blaria. I'm going to call the Molviz up to sort you out. Sort yourself out. So the Mulvi Sahib is like this boogeyman, you know, this like Hulk Hogan type figure, and this like incredible Hulk. That Bichara, he's gonna come and with Dunda. One youngster, one woman, she bought her son and she said, we want our son to come and study with you. I said, by all means, Bismillah, these are our future fruits and our, our you know. So then she said to him, she said, Beta, aapne Mulvi Sahib ki baat sunni, warna ye soti maarte, soti. <laughs> You have to listen to what the Molvi Sahib, the Shaykh is saying, otherwise he has a stick in his possession. And I stopped her, I said, please, no, no, no. And I said, we do not do such things. I said, that, Jaha tum rahe, hum khai, khai dande, hum ande. 
If you're saying hit a danda, uh, it, it sounds nice in Urdu, forgive me. <laughs> if you're hitting a stick, we will give them something to eat. We're not looking to hit and... An, uh, this is not the sunnah way. But can you see the mizaj which has made? Now they've separated themselves and become more and more distant. The most valuable thing we have, youth. And now when we see, we see youth which are untouched. Or out of touch rather, I use this word enter, out of touch with the deen. That's why it's easy for them to infiltrate into gangs, gangs of people. It's easy for them to infiltrate and go into a gathering wherein there is nothing but shar and evil taking place. And they infiltrate and they go into those places because they feel welcomed. Come, 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 come. And they give them stuff and they think these people have got my back. I'm walking in the streets of Streatham and these boys have got my back. If dramas kick off, they're there to help me. They feel secure, they feel safety. It's a fake image, there's no safety there. But they think, they think it's there because they've open arms accepted them. Open arm accepted them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahu Akbar, his sunnah was the, the greatest example of any figure that stepped on this earth. If we were to take this example and adopt in our lives how to treat the youngsters. One youngster was sitting down eating food with him and his hand was... There's a, a, a plate of food <clears throat> and it's going in all directions. What does he do? He holds his hand and says to him, Oh son, look, say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, say Bismillah and eat the food which is near you. Ya ghulam, sammillah wa kul mimma yalik. Really send soft and gently. This is how he had nasiha. Now if we see a youngster putting all hands, the first thing we do is smack the hand. And say, haven't you got no manners? Is this what we taught you? Automatically negativity. <clears throat> so this, this uh, mizaj has now distant the youth away. There are, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we don't make any form of tarbiyah, of course, there's tarbiyah there, but what I'm trying to say is that we've, sometimes either we've go, we go too relaxed, or we go too extreme. We have to understand what is the correct way. But going, but sticking on the subject, otherwise we'll go well off track. Now the youngsters, they feel out of touch, so now it's easy for them to get associated in gangs. It's easier for them to get pulled into uh, drugs, following after girls. Following after things which are completely haram and have no place in Islam. Why? Because they feel accepted. Naturally, what you want to do, a person doesn't like feeling like a loner. And a person who's got no friends with them. They want to feel like they're with a crowd, they're with somebody. It has something, it has, they don't like being lone people by themselves, you know. Now we see. What conditions have come to this Ummah? People recently with the names Muhammad, Muhammad this person, Muhammad this, Abdul this, Abdul this. The crimes with the people were involved in. What a shame on the Muslim Ummah, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. When a Muslim does something, it's a Muslim. We should always think, I am that person that is contributing to the zillat of this Ummah. I am also adding to the filth. I am also bringing down the name which Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spent his whole life in striving for. The Sahaba spent so hard leaving the company of Rasulullah, going all across the world. Only a small number of graves, approximately 12,000 in and around Makkah, Medina. The rest, where did they go? They vanished into thin air? They spread far and wide to take the message of La ilaha illallah. This was their fikr. And this is what we have to understand. These will be the same youngsters that will take this message forward. If they have not got the correct tarbiyah, they have not got the correct understanding, they have not got the correct mahal and the correct environment, and I ask you a question, which direction are these youngsters going to go in? And the outside, it pulls automatically, it's got its natural pull. You don't have to raise up any banners. Burai and evil it gives da'wah itself anyway. So they're already going to go towards that. But sadly, even our deen is now being circled around dunya as well. We say, yeah, do a little bit of deen, you know. Parla zara brabur rako. 50-50, you know. Not even 50 feet, do a little bit of deen. You're praying five times salah, you've read Quran once in your life, Subhanallah. Subhanallah. 
And we make big, big takbir. MashaAllah, my son done one khatam of Qur'an. What are you so happy about? What are you so happy about? This was supposed to be the general thing of a Muslim. Wake up. In the villages, in some villages you go, you go around Fajr time and people are still reading Qur'an in the mornings. Does you still hear the, the Qur'an, the, the Qur'an mashallah, people reading Qur'an in the mornings. What, what are we doing, subhanAllah? What are we giving to these children? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. One person phoned me up recently and he said, well, not recently, it's going back quite some time. And he said to me, I want my son to come and study in the madrasa. And I thought, Tiga, of course, we're happy to accept anybody. And he told me his age and I had to have some skepticism. I said, I'm afraid, but I can't accept a student beyond this age. 15 years old. So then he asked a question, the why? And I told him, that, look, the simple reality is, is that we have to abide by certain laws. And the law does not state you can have that young child, that, that, that old child together. There are obviously certain problems which we could face in the future. So unfortunately, there's two ways about it. Either he joins the adult class or he joins something else. Now the father... Subhanallah, my next question was this. Okay, Tiga, Tiga, okay, we'll think of something. What education has he had? What level is he at the moment? Has he had any sort of training before? Has he had any sort of instruction before? The person turned around and he goes, I'll be honest with you, he hasn't even started the qaida yet. And the age of 15, I couldn't control myself. Normally I'm very polite, very diplomatic. I, wallah, I couldn't control myself. I said, for God's sake, from where, the, where was you for 15 years? I'm, I'm not known with that rough. But for 15 years, Yar, what have you been doing? You've got three kids now. What are they doing? He goes, Yar, but I, care, but I was just earning money, you know? Money, 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 money. So we just push them to the side. Koi baat nahi. Khair, it's okay. Khud ba khud, they'll come okay by themselves. And we just threw ourselves in, in the fix of, of the worldly, just to acquire wealth. For how long? 50 years, 60 years? And you're gonna die and leave wealth behind for kids like that? What are they going to do with that wealth? Are they gonna use it in the ita'at of Allah? Are they gonna use it in according to the will of Allah? Sad reality is, it won't take place at all. What, what haq do they understand of deen? If deen is not put into them, is not, is not taught to them, they will do what the, what anyone, whatever to anyone tells them. Deen will be a last priority. Deen will not be the overriding concern in their hearts. They will say, Cholo, this is coming in my heart, I will do this. Whereas a person who's got consciousness of deen, he will say, this is what my Allah says, this is what Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this is what I will take. Our homes are empty from this. Our homes are empty from the name of Allah and the name of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Which rasta and path will our, will our children take? Where will they go? Which direction will they take? And do we think just merely by sending them to masjid for one hour, two hours a day, everything will be sorted? Everything will be, be so fine and hunky-dory. There's a big fitna as well in our communities. We say however fast the child finishes Qur'an, that madrasa is good. Now, I don't want to make tanqeed on anybody. Allah knows best what, how, what I'm, how, in which way I'm saying this. Why do we keep children for two to three years? Why? Because to make tarbiyat of that child, you have to instill within them the love of Rasulullah, the love of Allah. Now people think of it as a trend. Finish as fast as you can. And they say, Yaar, this auntie ji, she's teaching Quran in six months, ten months, one year. And you Molvis, you say, we ham ulama hai, or ham molvi hai, or ham hafiz hai. You spend ten years in madrasas, you're spending three years on a child. So you don't even need to become a Molvi at all. You can just be an average person and just teach. You're not achieving the desired results. Can you see the mizaj of the people? Subhanallah, is it just about quick fix? What happens? Three years time, five years time, they let them go to school and watch what happens. All the ta'alimat gone, gone. There's no concern for deen. They couldn't care less. You walk in schools, People can identify you as a Muslim, they will not be seen dead saying Assalamu Alaikum. They won't, they're that ashamed. They're that embarrassed. Are we leaving wealth for children like this? What's gonna happen to that wealth you squint your whole life for? What children are we leaving that wealth for? Which benefit is that wealth going to be? Which benefit are those houses going to be? 
We know multitudes of examples, multitudes. Wallah, I wish I could, if I could just take what I have seen in my small life and people would be shocked and I have not seen nothing. Just my local area and a few local areas. The general trend, do what you can do. Just drive yourself. 16 hours, 20 hours a day, no problem. When we say come to the masjid, we come here for this, I came here for money. Someone was asked, he said that, have you got any relatives there? He goes, yeah, yeah, I have here, one second. He pulled out a 10 pound note, he goes, yeah, you see this woman on this piece of paper? She's my relative, she's my, she's my relative, she's my family, I've got no family here. This is the comments we're making. What's going to happen when you, for Allah's sake, wake up and open our eyes? What's going to happen? What is going to be the condition of those children? Okay, let's say we have 10 houses, 7 houses. Oh Allahu Akbar, one incident came in my heart. This one I will have to share. I can't mention the town, just in case anybody knows and they start inquiring. So we won't even mention the town. There was one incident, Allahu Akbar, this is very sad. Wallahi, I heard this recently. And qasam by Allah, I cried. This one person, he was saying, I went to one area and I saw one man, he was sitting there holding his head and just... Just rubbing it like this. So he walked past and he couldn't identify him as being a Muslim. There was no identity of being a Muslim. So he said, Un Uncle, you alright? Is everything, everything well? You, you got a headache or something? And then he said, oh, What can I tell you, son? I'm in very, very bad position. I'm in, very, I'm in a lot of pain. So he said, Where are you from? So he identified his country and his nationality and it just so happened, funny enough, they're both from the same town. Check that out. Coincidence. They were both from the same town. Now, I don't want to mention country because we're not here to attack personality, nationality or nothing. This is Ibrah because we're one Ummah. Kick nationalism to the side, nothing to do with Islam. We are Muslim, one Ummah Muslims. He walked past and then he sat down and said, Uncle, okay, what's your situation? He said, look son. I swear, I wish I could, can, I wish I could, you, I could explain my dard and the pain which I feel. I wish I could explain to you the pain which I am feeling. He said, I came back in the 60s. Poor people, we had nothing. We had absolutely nothing. Allah Ta'ala brought me here. <clears throat> I just saw it happen, I got married here. And I got married, after I married, I had two kids. But my concern was, I need to build bank balance. Basa basa. I need to build a koti back in somewhere in, in, a, in a fine big place. I need to build a house somewhere nice and big. So now what happened is he said that I struggled and I worked. I've to now I've got 11 houses. 11 houses. I've got a couple of shops. He said there's no deficiency in money. I have no concerns when it comes to money. He said, but when did I wake up and when did I realize that I've gone too far and now I need to take a U-turn and come back? When? Allahu Akbar, Allah save us all. He mentioned to this person, he said, now my condition is such, my daughters have gone mature age. Their regular activity is they go clubbing. And so many times I have seen it with my eyes, they have brought men back into my house and they had made zina in my house. I swear by Allah, I'm not here to fabricate stories to impress you. I'm not here to fabricate a story to impress you at all. Because this is sharam for us, sharam. But this is the truth of what can happen. And by this time he was crying, wallah he was crying so much. And then he said to the, to the youngster, he said that when I said to my daughter, I said, oh, please have some shame. You're a, you're, a, you're a women. Have some shame. Your izzad, your respect has been stolen. And they're just coming to... Their taqaza is there and they're gone. What concern have they got for you? They're seeing you half naked. They're saying, ha, this we can... We easy shikar. Easy target here. Go there, finish. Bye, see you later. We've got nothing to do with you. Who are you? What? And then he said, I went to my daughter, I said, please look, don't do this, for Allah's sake. She goes, old man, you shut your mouth, yeah? You shut your mouth. I do what I want to do. And the mother is taking the side of the daughters. Free, they said, she's got her own mind, she can do what she wants to do. It's a free country we live in. No doubt it's a free country, and alhamdulillah it's a free country. But does that mean we sack our Islam off? We sacrifice the teachings of Rasulullah? 
Imagine that khabar when he gets to Rasulullah, the pain he would feel. In his qabr, the tarab, Allahu Akbar. My ummati are doing this, the ummah is doing this. A beautiful young girl from the, my ummah, with respect, has gone out and made shame of herself. And why is the father doing all those years? He said, Qasam by Allah, if I lived in a council house, I would be happy that today my daughters received their izzat. We don't know what's going on, that's the truth, we don't know. There are multitudes of examples, so many which I can tell you, and from my gunikar eyes which I have seen. This is nothing. We sit comfortably in Streatham, in Mitcham, in Norbury, in Tooting, in, Tro- in Croydon. Go out, make chakar and you will see the condition of the ummah. We sit comfortably. You see the number of the masallis, you say, Islam is, this is like Darul Khilafah in Streatham. Shukr alhamdulillah, I'm telling the truth. It is the shukr that some brothers are coming and they are praying within the masjid. Otherwise our masjids would be empty. Don't feel content sitting in our masjid and judging the, 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 how much deen we have. This is a big, big fitna which is across the whole ummah. We don't understand the, the, the depths of the nuqsan which is happening to our youngsters. We don't have no idea. I know a person, another example personally, the old, the respected gentleman, he comes, he's now passed away. Allah ta'ala fill his qabr with nur and forgive him. He was a sincere guy, he was a very humble man, very nice gentleman. But he did not make no effort on his youngsters. They just feel content. We take our child every year back to Gujar Khan for six weeks. This is sufficient. That is culture, that is not Islam. So they take him back just for a few weeks, Qasam by Allah, he became murtad. He goes, oh, no, this is, what's his word? and the words he said, the words he said, even a person of normal aql would say, how can you say this about people? And by your deen, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, no concern. That element was not there, that I need to make effort on my youth, the youth which are coming, the most valuable sarmaya which we have. What are we doing, Allahu Akbar brothers? What are we doing to now make effort on these youngsters which we are seeing not walking towards Jahannam, they are flying towards Jahannam. Rasul Sallallahu mentions, my example and your example is what? Some, it's like a fire. And it's like moths, I'm just giving you a rough translation of the hadith. Moths are falling in, Think things, you know when you have a fire, moths they come. You are flying towards the fire and I'm trying to grip you, I'm trying to pull you back but you're slipping from my hands. But this was when Rasul was making effort. Who was making effort? Who is there to cry when they see the janazah of one woman's haya leaving the home? Who is there to cry when they see that youngster who's selling and shutting drugs like he sees as if he is a farz from Allah? Who is, who is there to cry over the ummah when we are being all looked at with so much zillat, Allahu Akbar, so much zillat. How on earth are we going to get out? How are we going to get out? It will start by you and I making some effort. Don't feel content. MashaAllah, in UK, some people could be a bit content. Go back 20, 30 years, there was nothing. Now, MashaAllah, you see Madaris. Don't be fooled by this image. Don't be fooled by this Zahiri image of deen. We know the conditions of some people, and especially some countries. Let's talk to the students that have come from abroad, listen to their, their mentality. You'll, you will gauge how much deen is in these people. The father could be a haji, the mom could be a haji, all long, long beards and salah. Don't judge Islam superficially. That mashal dadi here, both, 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 both. Um, this is the sunnah, alhamdulillah. We are Muslims and we are proud of this. But don't judge the, the deen just on superficial things. This is an element of deen and we are proud of this. And wallah, we walk in the street with izzat, alhamdulillah. We are flag bearers of Islam and we are alhamdulillah those people that are following the sunnah of Rasulullah. Even the other day, I was at the hospital, pulled up, dropping off my wife, my son. A guy walks past, we know the brother, we know the brother. A, come, a regular person coming to the masjid. But now there are people walking, people walking past. Half naked people walking and he's walking with his walking stick. And I looked at him to try and catch eye contact. He looked at me and went, straight. Oh, what's, why don't you give salam? Are you telling me they look at your face and saying, Masha, you're British, you're British, you. They can see you're not Yar, what's wrong with you? you they know you are not a British person. I can pull off me more British because I'm half English. But my own family, who are English, they will see me in the street. Oh sir, you're alright and come and give me a hug and really... What's happened to the Muslim? Why are we so jahil for? Why have we become so inferiority complex orientated? 
Subhanallah, don't we realize that if we die on Iman, our destination is Jannah. This is what Allah has given this Ummah. Now walk past, the, I'm afraid to say the word Assalamu Alaikum. Just in case I get, you know, I'm Muslim, they'll find out I'm a Muslim. They don't know who you are. They don't know who you are. And if they do, so what? I pulled up in a car once at traffic lights. One guy, whenever he would see me, would say, Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Full tajweed. We pull up at a traffic light. He had a passenger. And he opened the door, hello, hello. And I said, please. He knows you're a Muslim, brother. He knows. And he, you know, just all afraid then. Look in the mirror every few seconds. Like, <laughs> Why? Why, I ask you? We are the Ummah of Rasul Sallallahu Allah gave us sharaf through Islam. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he wrote, when he reached Jabiyah, which is in modern day Aman, this long qissa, Bishop of Sophronia sent Umar radiallahu anhu to come and to enter into Baytul Maqdis and Jerusalem peacefully. Long incident. Abdul Rahman bin Auf came and his attire was a bit more better than usual. Not spruced up, a bit more better than usual. <clears throat> so Umar radiallahu anhu sees and Umar radiallahu anhu, he was very particular about making islah of his governors. He would look at Abdul Rahman, looking at him. You know, Abu Ubaidah, sorry, Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah. Abu Ubaidah, he looking goes, Dunya ya to nahi hai. The dunya hasn't come here, has it? Because normally there's some condition of Sahaba, they would be, they wouldn't care. But joy hair hair. They never used to be there, people constantly looking in the mirror. Do I look right at this angle? From this angle, let me have a look. Do I look good? Oh, do I look alright? Yeah, all good. They didn't care about this. They cared how they looked in the court of Allah. So what happened was, Umar radiallahu anhu was looking, he hasn't gone there, has it? He said, no, 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 ya middle moment. The situation is this, that these people, they become, they're full of ru'ab. When they see the people dress in this nice manner, they have ru'ab. You know, they are overwhelmed with awe. And I think you should mount off this mule and I think you should take a horse. <clears throat> what happened? There's uh, one, two riwayahs. One riwayah has the Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu sat for a bit. And the horse started swaying. And then Umar radiallahu anhu had this thought in his heart. Now understand, the Sahaba were so conscious over their nafs and their heart. That kayyinaukin nafs, it puts a little thing in the heart. So he would think, and they would check all the time. Now this thought came. Alhamdulillah. You know, Alhamdulillah. Nothing, that, not nothing haram, but maybe kuchhu. I am Chaudhry now, you know me. I am Malik Sahab now, Bat Sahab now. Don't, not this, he just had this thought, you know, Alhamdulillah. This, this, this good feeling, and he was afraid, he got off the horse, and he said, bring back the mule. I noticed there was a little twitch that something went in my heart. I don't even want to let Kiba even go in. Forget coming, it cannot even go near. Cut it off from the root. And the horse started swaying as well. And he mentioned this one jumla, Allahu Akbar, worthy of us to write with gold. You know, we were people of disgrace. But what happened? Allah wa ta'ala gave us izzat through nothing other and none other than Islam and Iman. Allah gave us izzat through this. Islam and Iman. Wallah, when we leave the method or anything to do with Islam and Rasulullah, qasam by Allah, we will be disgraced. But we've forgotten about ourselves. Let's just say, for argument's sake, people came from abroad, Muslims, 100%. Let's just say as 100, 100 people, as just as an, for our understanding. From 100 people, 50 people are only those people that really took the deen. 50 people. From that 50, how many further are taking the deen? Again, only another 50%. So now it's gone down to 25. Now out of that 25, how many are making amal now? 12. We are in this country, some people, second generation, third generation, some Mirpuri is fourth generation. What's the condition of some of the people? I'm telling you, let, don't be satisfied thinking this is a Muslim area. It's a place where Muslims happen to live. Or people who call themselves Muslims happen to live. My brother had the, said exactly the same thing to me. He went recently to one country. And I said to him, how did you find it? Was it any good? Yeah, he said that, I've come to this conclusion, I will not dare call it a Muslim country. It's a chance where Muslims happen to stumble across and they're staying there. 
This is why one Shaykh, he mentioned in the Bayan, and this is something we should all take ibrat from. We need to fix up. He mentioned what? He was going, make dua. Allah Ta'ala, Muslimano ki hukumat na lai. Don't level it. Never be government here. Muslim, Muslim, kabhi bhi rule na kare. People are saying, Toba, Toba. Mulvi sahab, what's this? And he goes, Nahi bhai dekhe. Allah, I'll translate for you. Muslimano ki hukumat na ho. Islam wali hukumat ho. Samjha na? Islam wali hukumat ho. We don't want Muslims to run it. We want Islam to run it. Then you will see the adil, the justice, the izzat. Everything will be there. But my dear respected brothers, in order to get out of this plight, we need to first make some effort for ourselves. Look at our youth, Allahu Akbar. This was the focus of the topic and I've gone all over the place. These are the people we need to strive. Here we see only a few number of youth. The masjid is, not, is only for youth. Everyone is to come into the masjid, everyone. But what efforts are we making? These are going to be the future flag bearers of Islam. Don't worry about money. Allah will take care of their, your money and theirs. But if we leave them to their own faculties, we leave them to the dispense of others, what is going to be their condition? We have to make some worry and concern. We have to make some effort. We have to take time out and guide them and help them and assist them. If we don't, we will never come out of this plight which we are in. There are such bad conditions, you will be surprised. In my local area, one brother, he opened his rosa qasam by Allah with a pork sausage. He goes, I didn't know, I thought it was okay. We eat pork at home. This was the parents, they didn't tell him this much. One brother, I said, can we go to the masjid? He goes, and alhamdulillah, you see, he identified himself as a Muslim. He called himself a Muslim. It just so happened, he, 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 I was walking past, he said salam to me. I would never have dreamt the brother was a Muslim. And then I was giving him a bit of da'wah and he said, can I come to the masjid? I said to him, why don't you come to the masjid? He said, can I come with this? And he pulled out a cross with Isa on it. And I was like, where did you get this from? Not in a rough way. Brother, where did you get this? My mom gave it to me as a gift for good luck. Brothers, I'm not joking. This is not a joke. I'm being serious. I'm sitting on the mimbar to fabricate stories to impress his zulm. I'm to wallah my own personal experience. We should not feel content. We don't know what's going in these youngsters' minds. Have we ever sat down to them to gauge what is the level of deen in these kids? Sat down and talk to them. We need to make their role model, like Rasulullah. Make their role model if they're women like Aisha, Khadija, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, and, and also like Umar, Abu Bakr, and these people. When they should have this just by their heart, I want to be like my Nabi, and nothing else but my Nabi. I want to be like the, like the Sahaba. The youngsters of today, they are going on the track, which I'm telling you is, it is very, very, the, the halat forward, subhanallah, I'm telling you. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. Because people now, they are now even afraid, they, are, they, are, they don't even want to be associated as Muslims. If that is the condition of first generation, what's happening to third and fourth? Forget saying assalamu alaikum when you meet, it's your right, bro. This is their meeting. The concept of salam is gone. What element of Islam are we being content with, happy with these people? But we have to make dua to Allah Taala to take us out of this plight. Start ta'aleem in your homes. Make fikr for your youngsters, for yourselves. If we do not, there will be no difference. The plight will inten- they'll get worse and worse. We will see downfall effects. We will see those people, zahiran, they are Muslims. But inside there is nothing to do with Islam at all, other than name. Holidays are coming up. By think to me yourself like this, all I've worked for my whole life, it will be squandered, thrown. They don't care. Allah, they don't, there's no concept of Allah. There's no concept of Rasulullah. I want to spend where I want to spend. I will do what I want to do. They're not going to look after the mum. Mum's going to an old person's home. All life you work for them, you save all these houses. With this banner, oh, I'm filling their hukuk. I'm filling their hukuk. You are filling your own desires. You could have stopped at two houses, three houses. I'm not negating wealth. Earn. Become billionaires. But take time out for your awlad. You done 12 hours today? Go home now. Spend three hours with them. Give them time. Let them think my dad is there. I finish off in this last incident. One youngster, subhanallah, he would get money from his father time to time, time to time, time to time. He went to his dad, he said, Dad, can I have some money, please? And he said, go away, just stop disturbing me. Just go, please, you know, leave me alone for a minute. He goes, can I have some money that I want this X, Y, and Z thing? 
So he said, look, I've given you all this, I've given you this, what more do you want from me? The child goes. After a while, the father thought to himself, Ya I shouldn't have gone on like that. He's my son, I should let me go and say, speak to him. So he went upstairs after about half an hour or so, spoke to the son and said, son, what's the matter? What do you want? He said, I want X, Y, and Z amount of money. And uh, subhanAllah, the question the son was asking was, father, how, how much do you get paid an hour? And he goes, what's it to do with you how much I get paid? This was why he came to disturb him, I want this. And I was asking, how much do you get paid an hour? The father goes, how, what's your business how much I get paid an hour? And he said, no, I, I just want to know. And he told him, I get paid roughly this much. Are you happy now? Go now. So then after each other, he went to see his son and asked him, look, what's the matter? And he said, oh, this is my heart. I, I, I just want a bit of money from you. So when the father gave it, he said, what son, what do you want the money for? He said, you know, dad, we haven't spent time father and son for six months. <clears throat> I'm saving up money so I can buy one hour's work from you. One hour's work. Why? What's wrong with the Muslim? I'm getting enough money just so I can save up one hour. So I can give it to my father, so my father can spend some time with me. Allahu Akbar. What the fuck? This is the condition of our people, Allahu Akbar. We have to understand, our youngsters are near, they want us. They need someone there, they need that shafqat. They need that person to be there, hold them and call them their son. Call them their beloved. Be there at the time of need. Comfort them in the time of need. Money won't help them. Money won't assist them. These are things which will come and go. The real thing will be there, that bond. Islam, Deen, Allah, Allah's Rasul. This is the only thing that will help these children. So my dear respected brothers, I humbly request, some line up and I will touch everyone's feet if necessary. Go home, spend time with your children. Take them out in Jamaat, spend some time with them. Bring them to the masjid, spend some time in some shiul's company. Do something. Because before it gets too late, before it gets too late, because this is our most valuable sarmaya, this is our most valuable thing we have. Wallah, this came really, I really request everyone, please make some worry and concern before it gets too late. Once the nuqsan has begun too much, there will be no U turn. From this majlis, go with this intention. I myself will make tawbah, I will seek forgiveness from Allah, and I will start a new leaf. Are we all going to try and do this inshallah? I myself am going to try, all of you try. It's not impossible brothers. Allah's rahmah is, wa- is wasi' it's very wide. You make intention, oh Allah, do you know what? Today, that's it. My son is not going to be just a normal Muhammad, he's going to be a Muhammadi Muhammad. My son's not going to be just Abu Bakr, he's going to be an Abu Bakr like Sahabi Abu Bakr. Make effort on them. Wallah, when you're in your qabr, the, 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 you will feel peace. On the day of judgment, you will benefit. Please, for the sake of Allah, for the sake, for, 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 your, for your own akhirah as well, make take some time and make some effort on them, and let's make some worry and concern for our youth, our most great and valuable asset we have. May Allah Taala give us the ability to practice and make amal. And my last dua, just as how we have gathered here, may Allah Rabbul Izzat accept all of us to gather, inshallah, in Jannah al-Firdaus. Wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Wa sallallahu taala ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.